Yeah? Okay. Good morning, class. <laughs> uh, yeah, so chair yoga. I had a foot issue, um, and that's a whole other story, and my allergies have pretty near made me crazy, and, but I got my taxes done. So as I said, yeah. Right, so let's just check in with how we sit, because um, these are not, of course, your chairs, but at home, they'll be sitting in their own chairs. There is a tendency to just kind of sit back and let the lower back go convex. That becomes a real problem. So if you need to, I want you to scooch yourself to the edge of your chairs and think about sitting up as tall as you can. So again, you know, maybe like a marionette or just think about, I talk about axial extension. This is the thing that probably releases the most stress and tension from our bodies when we actually sit up nice and tall. And you can keep your hands on your laps, whatever's comfortable. Love what Liz is doing here. If your legs are a little bit on the short side and you want to use your block underneath your feet, um, because the other important thing about sitting in any chair at all, as soon as your knees are higher than your hips, it is almost impossible to maintain the integrity of your lower back. And we're just, you know, taking care of our spines, taking care of our bodies. So sit up nice and tall. Your feet are flat on the floor. And as you inhale, you might think about lifting up at the sternum. And as you exhale, just imagine that your shoulder blades are tucking and your shoulders are also lowering down your back. And don't make anything so intense when I suggest that you do something, it's counterproductive. We're here to relax, to release, and just to become very aware of our bodies. And then with your eyes closed, just notice your breathing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit today, intermittently, about the importance of nose breathing, because I've had some intense allergies all week. Um, and even if we're stressed or if we're overexerting, we tend to mouth breathe. Now, there is a time and a place for mouth breathing. If we're running away from a saber-toothed tiger, yeah, you're going to be breathing through your mouth. But mostly we want to be breathing through our noses. And the longer and the slower and the fuller and more complete your inhalations and exhalations are, the more we activate our parasympathetic nervous system. So that's the side of our nervous system for rest and digest, for repair, restore, and healing mind and body. And then while you're sitting and just paying attention to your breath, just lift your toes off the floor. Now you're gonna feel your calf muscles working here. I went to see a podiatrist on Saturday, so I'm going to go over a little bit of foot stuff because um, for those of you at home, whether you can see or not, I'm wearing a tensor sock on my foot. I had some plantar fascia issues. And then lower your toes back down. And on an inhale, once again, lift your toes off the floor. Notice when your toes are off the floor, even when we practice this standing, how your big toe mount your baby toe mount, and maybe the center front of your heel should be all lightly pressing into the floor while you maintain a long straight back, but relaxing your shoulders on every exhalation and lower your toes down once again onto the floor. And again, paying attention to breathing through your nose when we breathe through our nose, we've got little hairs and a mucosal lining that are really our first line of defense against bacteria and viruses. And if some of you remember back in the day when we were still kind of nervous about the coronavirus, I mentioned that when we hummed and tried to get the sound up around our sinuses and noses, that this humming sound, but even the breathing in through the nose, but when we hum, it produces a little more nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, nitric oxide is the word. And nitric oxide 
is like a sensor that helps the body maintain a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide. This is super important for your body, but particularly for brain health. So again, breathing through the nose and even the humming sound, which we're not doing right now, but if you, you know, and of course, thinking of these things when you're not feeling well or you're thinking, oh, did I catch something? You know, mm, so I'm just doing it. And you'll feel the vibration around the nose and sinus area. And this will produce more nitric oxide to help combat um, bacteria, viruses. Okay, so now come up onto the balls of your feet, lifting your heels off the floor. So different movement for the calf muscles. And the calf muscles attach to the Achilles tendons and the Achilles tendons attach to the plantar fascia. So yeah, everything's connected. And when something's not right, of course, the body is gonna become imbalanced and lower your heels down on an exhale. And on an inhale, once again, coming up onto the balls of your feet, lifting the heels. and lower back down. So your feet are flat on the floor, you're sitting nice and tall, your shoulders are really moving down your back and you're lifted up in your sternum or heart center. So another thing I wanna tell you about nose breathing as opposed to mouth breathing is that there's a microbiome in the mouth and saliva has a lot to do with that. When we mouth breathe, we tend to dry out the area of the mouth which reduces the ability of the microbiome of the mouth area to do the work of, you know, killing off bacteria in the mouth. So there's, you know, and then finally, of course, if you're in a dry, arid climate or, you know, when it's cold out, which we still get a little bit of cool air um, here this time of year, when we breathe through the nose, we moisten, hydrate, and warm the breath. And this is helpful for the respiratory system. If you have respiratory issues, breathing through your nose is very helpful. And finally, the last thing, a lot of people with sleep apnea, they breathe through their mouth. So there is things now called um, breathable mouth tape, if that's something that you know you experience. And, and the very last thing I will say is that if you can remember during the day, when you're not talking and you're just sitting doing something, just check in and see if you are breathing through your nose, okay? So again, you're sitting up nice and tall. You can feel your sits bones. You're honoring the curve in your lower back. Inhale, reaching up to the crown. Exhale, drop your chin towards your chest. So isolate just your neck and your head. So feel the stretch in the back of your cervical vertebra. Inhale, bring your head back to center. Exhale, let's lower right ear to right shoulder. Inhale, back to center. So your head's between your shoulders. Exhale, lower your ear to the other side. You may feel stretch beyond the neck. You may feel it in your trapezius muscles. This is a fan-shaped muscle that originates around the bottom of your skull, the back of your ear, and it fans out over that shoulder area. So today we're here to release some tension. Inhale, bring the head back to center, out of the neck, the shoulders, the upper back. Okay, and now inhaling in place and lengthening. Let's exhale. Bring your left hand to the outside of your right thigh and take the other arm around to the back of your chair. Now hook it wherever it feels right for you. And breathe in to your side ribs. Exhale to release into the twist. Inhale to lengthen axial extension, reaching up from the tailbone right up through the crown, exhale, release. 
One more inhale, exhale. Let's come back to center and just take a breath here. To inhale, you're reaching the crown up, not the shoulders. As you exhale, the shoulders go down. And then inhale in place, exhale, bring the opposite hand over to the opposite outside of your knee and bring the other hand around to the back of your chair, inhaling to lengthen. Don't go too far here, back off if you feel like this is straining or bringing any pain into your lower back. Exhale, just to try to settle, keeping your shoulders down. You can come back a little bit if you've twisted too far. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, settling into the twist. And one last breath in to lengthen. Exhale, come back to the center. Inhaling in place. Exhale, drop your chin towards your chest and then slowly drop your torso between your thighs and just slide your hands down the front of your shins and bringing your hands down to the floor or on the top of your feet and just letting your upper body hang with your torso between your legs. Really relax your neck and head here and then slowly roll up and you can Graze your legs with your hands, coming back to the center, inhale. Now, maybe I'll sit sideways so you can see. We're just gonna do a couple of cat cows in sitting position. Inhale, exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin, pull your bellies in. Inhale, you're gonna go in the opposite direction extending your spine, bringing your head back, pressing the chest, the diaphragm forward, exhale, into cat, and inhale, into a modified cow. You can just see a cow doing this, can't you? <laughs> And exhale, maybe in a far side cartoon, if you remember those. And one more time, extending, reaching with the front of your body forward, the head just gently going backwards, and come back to neutral. All righty. So again, you're sitting on the edge of your chair, Inhale in place. I'm going to do the mirror image. So you're going to draw your right knee up into your chest and squeeze, hug, hug, hug. Sit up nice and tall. The tendency would be for your a body to go backwards. Try to resist. And now bring that ankle on top of your knee. So sitting pigeon pose. But be mindful if you have knee issues. Sitting up nice and tall. Keep the sternum lifted, the shoulders down. Because we sit so much, we really need to pay attention to what our spines are doing when we're sitting. And if you're sitting directly on top of your sits bones, you'll likely be good to go. I wonder. So only gentle pressure, like very gentle or none at all, just checking in. Sometimes when we close our eyes, we become more sensitive to what's going on inside of our bodies. And then release and bring that knee once again into your body and let's point the foot and flex, point, flex, point and flex, point and flex and rotate. And change the direction. Look at, there's my sister with a compression. <laughs> we talked about being sisters last week. 
<laughs> okay, extend the leg, hold up under the hamstrings, sitting up nice and tall, gotta activate your core here, and then slowly lower the leg down, and maybe just bang out that knee a little bit. Sitting up nice and tall again, inhale. Let me know if it gets too hot over there. And exhale, bring the other knee in towards your chest. Sitting up nice and tall. Well, this gets into the ascending, descending colon. And let's flex the foot and point and flex and point and flex and point and rotate. So now you can have a good look at my latest fashion acquisition knot. It's a tensor for, it was the middle of my foot that wasn't happy, so it wasn't my heel, but the plantar fascia, of course, extends from the heel to the ball of, of your foot, and it was really unhappy last week. All right, so let's place, they come in black too, by the way, for those of you who prefer. <laughs> No, but it made a big difference. And staying off it, of course. I couldn't, I couldn't walk around the neighborhood. I was confined to my premises. <laughs> Not fun. And the squirrels probably missed me. <laughs> I'll make it up to them with peanuts. <laughs> so again, you know, you might notice a difference on one side or the other. Never press hard here, but you know, obviously this is an incredible stretch, pigeon pose, however you're doing it, whether you're lying on your belly, lying on your back, sitting in a chair, it is a great hip opener, stretching the ligaments, tendons. Okay, and then bring the knee back to center. Bring your hands underneath the backs of your thighs, straighten the leg, sitting up nice and tall and slowly lower that leg down. And again, maybe give that leg a bit of a shake out. Okay, so again, we'll do it. I'll try and do it the mirror image. So let's take the right knee out to the side and the left leg out to the other side. So you're sitting on the edge of your chair and you're gonna try and press the outside of that foot into the floor, but be mindful. So that Left leg's gonna be straight, and the right leg. Now, where is my block? Oh, there it is. It's gonna keep my block handy. Make sure your block is handy. And inhale, sweep the arms up to shoulder height. Shoulder height, warrior two. And then try not to lean the body forward. Keep your shoulders right over your hips, so your torso is straight up and down. And then lower your shoulders, relax your shoulders. And you know, it, it takes effort now for us to relax our shoulders. We're so used to having them up, um, rounded, hunched. And then lower your back arm down your back leg and reach straight up into exalted warriors. Stretching up and reaching up. And returning back to warrior two. Keep the shoulders lowered. Bring your torso so it's straight up and down. You're getting an intense stretch in your inner thigh, adductor muscles, it's different ways of working the same muscles we typically work. And then lower your arms down come back into the center. Now take your block and place it on the right side of your chair. And extend once again your left leg out to the side. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, bend over to the left. Bringing your left hand onto your left thigh. So now you're hinging from the side, stretching the ribs. And then come back to center and your block should be on your left side so you can place your hand on it. No, your, it'd be your right side, pardon me, your right side. And reach up and reach sideways. 
So you may need to move the block. Inhale, come back to center, and let's place the block on the other side for when we need it. And let's do our warrior on the other side. So left leg bent to the side, your right leg is straight out, and you're trying to press the outside of the foot into the floor. But believe me, if that's too intense, just be on the side of your leg, do what you can. But sitting up nice and tall, inhale, sweep the arms up to shoulder height, and fix your shoulder, heavy shoulder height. Thinking about a date tonight? No. <laughs> Okay, and lower your back arm down your back leg and reach that other arm straight up, coming into exalted warriors. And back to warrior two, lower your shoulders, lengthen your neck, keep your sternum lifted. Maybe you can press a little more into the outside of the straight leg or not. Listen to your bodies. And release your arms down and bring your legs forward once again with your knees kind of hip width apart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Oh, we have still the, the leg bent out to the side, pardon me. So your right leg is still out to the side. And then we're going sideways now. So lowering your right arm to your right leg. Breathing into your intercostal muscles, which are between your ribs. Inhale up and bring your hand onto your block and reach your arm up and over. Nose breathing, deep and slow. Inhale, come on back up and bring yourself back into the center. And I just want to check that I've gotten this, move through all of these, because then we'll be done with our, oh, nope. We're not done. We got one more and it's a dandy. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn down the heat because I don't want everybody stripping off here. Hang on one second. Okay, so it'll back off in a moment. All right. Interlock your fingers. So make sure you're on the edge of your chair. You can interlock your fingers or just place them lightly behind your back. You know what's next here, right? Crunches. Okay, so inhale, exhale, bring your right knee to your left elbow. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. If you mouth breathe, that's fine. Inhale and exhale. Inhale to straighten, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You're trying to bring your elbow to your knee, but it's okay if it isn't. And exhale on the crunch. You can do this with your own breath, but you don't need to go really fast. <sighs> Elbow to knee. <sighs> and really feel your core working here, the slower you go. Let's do two more on each side. Exhaling on the crunch. Inhaling when you release. Beautiful. And then just take a moment with your hands perhaps facing up in the open and receiving position. You might kind of wiggle out your shoulders, maybe give your head a little shake. If you hear little sounds like I'm hearing, it's okay. It's just a little bit of calcium deposits, making little crunchy sounds, sitting up nice and tall. Again, try to breathe through your nose.
taking a moment to allow your breath to calm, steady, and deepen. Remember, when we breathe fully and completely, breathing all the air into the bottom of the lungs where the oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in the little tiny air sacs called alveoli, and exhaling fully, releasing carbon dioxide, lactic acid, and that deep breathing stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, that will do. So let's move our chairs somewhere out of harm's way. We're not going to be using them again. But you'll remember this when you're sitting at your desk, right? Wrong. <laughs> But you can see there, you know, there are so many things possible that we can do. Even if we're in a chair with a, with a sore leg. Okay, so we're going to stay standing on our mats. All right. So... Come into Tadasana, please. Outside of feet, parallel with the outside of your mat. Standing up nice and tall. So we're kind of going to do some of the same things and different things, of course. But engage your thighs. This one's just so important. As you engage your thighs, notice how your pelvic bowl tends to come into balance so that you're neither spilling forward nor backwards, lifting up at the sternum. Let's bring the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, roll them back and pull your armpits down. Notice the effort that this takes. And then lift your toes off the floor once again, feeling your big toe mount, baby toe mount, center front of your heel. And then lower your toes down. Keep your thighs engaged. Keep your sternum lifted. Keep your chin horizontal parallel to the floor. Eyes can be open or closed, looking at an imaginary horizon. And then let's turn the palms forward to externally rotate our arm bones in our shoulder joints. So the hip and the shoulders are ball and socket joints. They're the only two ball and socket joints. They move in many directions. That's the good news, and it can be the bad news if we overdo it. Okay, and beginning with half sun salutations. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Turn the palms out, bend the knees. Drop your hips, swan dive your torso onto your thighs, fingertips tented on the floor. And on an inhale, lift your hips up, let your heads hang. Let your spine lengthen and relax. Exhale, bend your knees. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, turn the palms out, releasing your arms down by your side. Really keep your feet grounded and rooted through the big ball, the baby. Um, Toe mount, center front of your heel. Exhale, swan dive onto your thighs, fingertips tented on the floor. Inhale, lift your hips up. Let the crown of your head hang down. Relax your neck, give your head a swing. And then exhale, bend your knees, drop your hips. Shoulders back, long spine. Inhale, sweep the arms out to the side, reaching up. Exhale, float your arms down, taking up lots of space. This is a gentle mobilization for your shoulder joints. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, swan dive, fingertips tented. 
Inhale, lift the hips, let the head hang. Exhale, drop the hips. Coming into your tuck, make sure your shoulders are back and away from your ears. Inhale to sweep up. Exhale, float your arms down and one more time. Inhale. Exhale, bend your knees a lot, coming into that tuck position. Inhale, lift your hips, let your head hang. Now bend your right knee, place your right hand on your left instep, top of your left foot. Inhale, sweep the left arm up, reaching up and stretching up. Exhale, float that arm down, bend your left leg. Place your left hand on your right instep. Inhale, sweep the arm up. Exhale, float it down, and then we're going to roll up to standing. Slowly rolling, keeping your chin tucked into your chest. Let your head be the last thing to come up. And then roll the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, roll them back. Now I didn't mention that we all need a strap. So if you don't have one, and I don't have one, um, everybody get a, a strap. Thank you, love. Is there one, do we one for tech guy? Thanks. And, and, if, and if I have to give mine up, I will. So as long as everybody has one, tech guy. He's having a nap. Specialized. He's, he's kapha. I'm still looking for the perfect dosha test. Okay, so you can just leave it around your shoulders for a moment, but, uh, but we're just going to do a little test here. Um, so interlock, well, no, actually first, so spreading your feet about the width of your mat, turning your toes out, bend your knees, inhale, bring your arms into a cactus pose, but it's goddess. Try to make sure your knees are tracking over your toes as much as possible. Sink your hips down. Keep your torso straight up and down, straight up and down if you can, so you're not hinging forward. We are going to do that in a second. And then bring your arms behind your back. Interlock your fingers. We've done this before. We're just going to do something a little bit different in a moment. So lift your head up. Now your feet really do need to be, they may need to be wider than your mat. And if they do turn sideways so that you do feel uh, comfortable and then squeezing your shoulder blades together, lifting your head up, exhale forward fold. Now I want you to notice with your fingers interlocked, how far your arms may go up and over. And it's not competitive, it doesn't matter. Release your arms and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. And now take your straps and bring them behind your backs and hold on to them at whatever distance apart. Okay, so then inhale. Once again, lift your hearts up. Exhale, forward fold, holding on to your strap, bringing, now oh, maybe I didn't get might have to grab a grab the strap so that your um, you want to start over your palm should be facing backwards so i had grabbed them the wrong way your palm should be facing backwards lift the arms up and over and maybe you went further maybe you didn't but it's a different kind of stretch when your hands are not together and release and once again, you can put your strap around your neck and then interlock your fingers the opposite way that you did. Okay, the opposite way. Bring your shoulders together, shoulder blades together, exhale, forward fold, and be mindful if you have a shoulder injury, perhaps you won't be uh, doing this with any kind of intensity. Always listening to your body and then release your hands down, walk your feet back in towards one another, and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, with your head being the last thing to come up. Okay, so I'll try and do the mirror image for you in this case. You're going to take your right arm across your body, 
and you're going to support at the elbow joint or higher up, but not here, not here, either at the elbow or higher than the elbow and just locking. So breathe into that right shoulder. And you're trying to keep that arm a shoulder height. So clearly, again, this is an intense stretch in another direction for your shoulder joint. And then unlock, bring that arm behind your back, pressing down. And then this is where you may take your strap and taking hold of it. And some of you may be able to reach your fingers to your arm, but it, it's not important whether you can or can't. But using the strap, you can start to pull the bottom arm up a little bit. But of course, be aware, don't do too much, don't do too little. <laughs> Junie, have I got you all confused? <laughs> You know what, just take one arm behind, be, behind your back and the other one there. Don't worry about the strap right now. Okay, and release. Once again, keep the strap. And let's shake out the shoulders here. Forwards, backwards, whatever feels good. And then bring the left arm in front of the body. And again, supporting and locking at the elbow. So the arm is straight across the body, Junie. Unlock your arms. Bring your left arm across your body, okay? And then take the other one underneath. Under, yeah, there you go. But keep that bottom arm straight. You got it. Breathe into the shoulder joint. I don't know how many of you listened or heard Sophie Gregoire Trudeau speak yesterday. She said one of the things I always say, it was really a good, it was on the current CBC, but she said, you know, where our attention goes, energy follows. And I say that a lot, of course. So using your breath, that's a type of energy, a real currency. It was a great interview, by the way. I was very impressed with her. She's just released a book, Closer Together. Not easy being in the public eye. No. People think it'd be great. It ain't. <laughs> okay, and unlock. And then take that straight arm, right arm over behind your back, right? Pat yourself on the back. Now this is where you're gonna take the other arm. Maybe you can reach, but if not, you've got your strap to grab onto. So on one side, I'm, I, you know, and this is an exercise, it's very intense, but it's a nice stretch for your traps. Um, your, not traps, hang on a second. What are these called, lats? Triceps, yes, thank you. <laughs> Maintaining your height, breathe. and releasing. Okay, that'll be it for our straps. We're gonna come down onto, into a lunge. So if you need a knee cushion, and the little black triangles on the bench over there are good for your knees, because we're gonna come into um, a lunge position. We're gonna do a few things on our knees. But if you don't have a cushion, you can always fold over your mat and create that cushioning for your knee. So come on down onto your knees now, and let's step the left leg forward. And you're gonna bring your hands inside of your left leg, and you're gonna stretch your back leg out behind you. So your hands are flat on the floor if possible, inside of your left 
leg. And then you can lower that left knee to the floor and flatten the top of the foot. So of course, this is a very intense stretch through the front of the thigh, the hip flexor. Just breathe into it. If it's too intense, of course, you can bring that front foot back so that you're not stretching your back hip flexor and thigh so much. You might move around a little bit, just feel what's going on. As Marvin Gaye sang, what's going on? Just a couple more breaths here. And let's bring that front leg back. We're gonna come into a modified child's pose. So curl your toes under and then bring your torso down with your arms out in front. Toes are curled under, the bum's gonna stay up in the air, but you are gonna take um, your torso, if you can, press it onto your thighs so your bum's a little bit more up in the air than it would be normally in child's pose, and lower your forehead onto the mat if you can. And then walk your hands around to the right side, around to the right side, and then really press your left palm into the ground. So again, we're stretching through the shoulders, all of the muscles, ligaments, and tendons that support this really important, very busy shoulder joint. And of course, as I've said the last few weeks, most of your breathing occurs in the side and the back of your body. So you could really feel it here. Keeping your toes curled under, if that's okay. And inhale. And come back into your tabletop and let's step the other leg forward. And bring your hands inside of that front foot. So if it's too intense to have your back leg straight out behind you, you can always draw it a little bit closer or take your body back. You can curl your back toes under if you like to stretch the plantar fascia. And that's a less intense stretch for the front of your thigh and your hip flexor. Or you can lower the knee to the floor, flatten the top of your foot so your toes are pointing backwards on your back leg. And then sinking your torso as low as you're able in this lunge. And breathe, close your eyes, go inside. And bringing awareness today to breathing through your nose to warm and humidify the breath, which is so much more gentle and protective of your respiratory tract, as well as producing nitric oxide to help balance the amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide going through your body. Alrighty, and let's bring the front leg back, coming into, again, a modified child's pose. So you're curling your toes under, you're pressing your hips back towards your heels, and then releasing your torso, your belly at least, onto your thighs, and your forehead onto the floor. And then let's bring the hands around to the left side. So you're stretching the right side of the body and you're gonna press your right palm into the floor. Right palm into the floor. This exerts a little more stretch 
through the arm and shoulder joint, as you're probably noticing, pressing the right palm into the floor. And bring your hands back to center. And if it feels okay, take your knees as wide as the mat, big toes touch, flatten the tops of the feet, and slowly take your hips back towards your heels. If bending your knees this much isn't kind to your body, stay in puppy pose with the bum in the air, knees close together, and release your forehead to the floor or create some elevation by folding your forearms one on top of the other or stacking your fists and again, breathing into your side and back ribs. And inhale, come on up. Now, I want you to clear space around the, from the half to the top of your um, mats, okay? Otherwise, there'll be a lot of crashing water bottles. And whatever else, but take a sip of water, actually, if you need one right now. So just clear a path from halfway around your mat to the top of your mat. So you can put your stuff at the bottom of your mat, like I have here, nice pile of junk. Okay, and come on onto your backs. Tuck your shoulder blades under your heart center. Tilt your chin towards the center of your chest, inhaling in place. Exhale, draw your right knee up and interlock your fingers around the knee. And let's, with the left hand on the outside of the right knee, take it across the body and extend the right arm out to the other side. So your right knee is over to the left and your right arm is out to the right. We're just getting ready for a little vinyasa of movements we haven't done in a while. I kind of call it the arms of the clock. Just create some space, opening up the shoulder, chest, upper back area. Inhale, come back to center. Keep your right knee into your chest. Draw your left knee up. Extend your right leg straight down in front and bring your right hand onto the outside of your left knee and bring it over to the right side and extend your left arm out to the left side. And let's inhale, bring the knee back into the center as you roll onto your back. And let's bring the other knee up and then straighten the legs so they're both straight up in the air. Take your arms out to the side. You'll probably want your palms to face down. Inhale in place, exhale, take both legs halfway over to the left. Turning your head to the right can help. So we are working the core, which is necessary for sitting up straight. Inhale, bring the knees, or the legs, pardon me, back to the center, straight up in the air. Exhale, take them halfway over to the right and turn your head to the left. You're holding here halfway. And bring the legs back to center. And now, Keep the knees bent, but place the soles of your feet on the mat and bring your arms down beside your body. Scooch your body over towards the right side of your mat. So your body's more towards the right side of your mat. Take your 
arms out to the side. And let's lower both knees over to the left. So both knees are over to the left. Now, ideally, you'd like to have the upper part of your legs perpendicular to your torso. Okay, so your knees are bent at right angle to your torso. Identify your right arm. Maybe slap the floor with it so you know where your right arm is. Now, inhale, you're gonna imagine you were making snow angels, sorry to mention the word, but draw that right arm along the floor, if you can, slowly up to midnight, slowly, reach and stretch, exhale, take it all the way around and have it meet the other arm in prayer pose. If you're finding yourself off your mat, scooch yourself over at this point. You're absolutely on the left side of your body with your knees bent perpendicular to your torso and your arms at shoulder height. Okay, same arm, same top hand. You're gonna inhale, sweep the fingertips along the floor, up and over behind your head, reaching up to midnight. Go slowly. When we go slow, we reduce the chance of injury or any kind of strain. And then exhale, keeping your fingertips on the floor. You're opening back up so that one arm is on one side, one on the other. Very intense stretch, so go slow. If your fingers can't be on the floor, it's okay to lift them off the floor. And then inhale, sweep that same arm. We're coming back again, reaching up and overhead, reaching up, stretching up. That arm is straight. Think the arms of a clock or ballerina. And continue with the arm, bringing it to meet the other hand. Now, you're going to bring your top knee into your chest and you're going to hold on to it with your top hand, okay? So your right hand is holding your right knee. Your left hand, the one that's still on the floor, is going to take hold of the big toe of the bent leg. And you're going to extend that leg out to the side as best you can and straighten the bottom leg and reach your top right arm up to the sky and slowly open it back over to the right side. Now be mindful. It may not touch the floor. Maybe you can visualize that it's resting on a cloud or resting in jello. Who's had jello lately? Not me, but I have happy memories of Jello. <laughs> My tummy resembles Jello. Maybe that's why. Oh boy. So breathe into stretching. Exhale into relaxing if that's possible. One more breath in. And then releasing the big toe that you're holding on to. Inhale, lift the leg up to the center as you roll onto your back. Bring your arms down beside your body and slowly lower the leg, not using gravity, using your muscles. Shh. Okay, scooch yourself over to the other side of your mat. So right over onto the side of the mat. Bring your knees up in towards your chest and then release them down towards the right side. So your arms are both out at shoulder height. Your knees are off to the right side. And you're gonna inhale, identify that left arm first of all. Left arm should be the arm that's opposite the side that your knees are bent. Okay, so the arm that's opposite the knee bending. Inhale, sweep that arm up 
over behind your head. Reach and stretch. You're going to feel that you're stretching most of the muscles that support your shoulder joint up and over and bring them around that arm, top arm over to meet slowly the other arm. And again, if you feel that you need more mat space and scoot your body over to the further side. So one hand is on top of the other in prayer. Inhale, sweep that top arm, top left arm up and over behind your head. You're laying on your side, your right side. You're reaching that arm up and over, stretching. Notice the muscles you're stretching, your pectoralis muscles in particular. And bring the arm back over towards the left side. So your arms are one on either side, shoulder height. And last time, inhale, keeping the fingers as close or perhaps on the floor, drawing a line with your fingernails around your head like a halo, reaching and stretching. Breathe into the stretch. Do not hold your breath. Exhale. Bring it all the way around now to meet the other arm. Okay. You're going to bring your top knee, left knee into your chest with your left hand. And then you're going to take hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. Or maybe it's going to be your ankle. Maybe it'll just be behind the back of your knee. See what you can grab here. And extend that top leg out to the side, onto the floor. Inhale your top left arm up. And exhale and open it over to the other side. Now, if your shoulder's totally uncomfortable, leave your arm up in the air or just place it on the side of your body. Please modify as you need to, to honor and respect whatever the limitations of your body are today. We take so many things for granted. I do. When everything's, you know, tickety-boo, and then when it isn't, we notice and we can remember that when everything comes back to feeling harmonious and balanced, to be grateful. One more breath in, breathing out, and then release the leg, whatever you're holding on to on that top left leg, lift it up into the air, roll onto your backs. If the bottom leg wasn't straight, straighten it and lower that leg all the way down. Scooch yourselves back into the center of your mat. If you have clothing handy or something to cover your eyes, please do that. And bring your body into Shavasana. So lift your shoulders up, tuck them under your heart, tilt your chin towards the center of your chest. Bring your heels together, let your feet splay out. And have your arms far enough away from you with your palms facing up to relax your shoulders, letting your body be soft and heavy. Eyes closed, separate the biting surfaces of the teeth, relax the jaw and truly let your body go. And just a little tip to encourage nasal breathing, place your tongue on the roof of your mouth. You can do this at any time. 
and this will help you to do what your nose was designed for, which is breathing. Feel spacious in your shoulder area, your upper chest, your back. Breathing into this area. Where our attention goes, energy follows. As Mother Nature reawakens, and yes, they were cherry blossoms, not apple blossoms that I said in my note. <laughs> Allergies, taxes, and a sore foot obviously can pull focus. But trying to smile through the foibles of life, the pain, even the suffering can go a long way to bringing some endorphins, those body's natural painkillers. We have a whole pharmacy within us. We just have to remember to access it. And smiling is definitely one of those ways that we can activate our body's natural healing processes and just bring some lightness and levity to where there might be heaviness or darkness. So as you inhale, notice your diaphragm expanding, pressing your belly up. And as you exhale, witness your diaphragm contract and your belly lower. Inhaling fully into the depths of your lungs. Exhaling, releasing all manner of toxins or stress. And inhale, stretch your arms over behind your heads, reach and stretch, point feet far, flex and point, and drop your arms down by your sides. Carefully and slowly roll over onto your side. You might want to spend a moment here resting on your bottom arm, making a pillow, bending your knees. And when you're ready, use your top arm to press yourself back up into a seated position. And I invite you, if you wish, to join me in chanting Om just once to close our practice today. Inhaling in place. Om. That was a beautiful thing. Namaste and have a beautiful day. Salutation, Prestige.